Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can add objects to curved or undulating surfaces just using all the tools present in Blender. So this came up in the end of the last video where I'd created this undulating landscape from Google Maps. The link to that video is in the description, you might want to check it out afterwards because it's pretty cool. And at the end of that we had some buildings floating in midair that we wanted to put on this surface. Now there are other places that this is going to be particularly useful. I've got another one set up here where we've got a load of chain mail and I want this set up onto, well, this sort of bit of cloth that might be a loincloth or something like that. So we will have a look at both of these. They're done with exactly the same technique. So in essence, I'm going to show you the same thing twice, but I just want to highlight the different uses of this. And this might be one that's more something you're interested in, but I will cover both. Feel free to jump to whichever one you find useful. Now coming back to this scenario, we had generated some buildings. I've just gone back a bit and we're going to show how we do that. We go to this GIS add-on, get our information for our buildings and we can click elevation from object, click OK and we end up with our buildings on our object and its undulation. But we said, well, this is not really extreme for this hill. I might want to exaggerate that in the Z like this and then suddenly these buildings aren't really working. Now, what I should say is if we actually go back a bit and get rid of the buildings, if I exaggerate this in the Z direction before I do this, this add-on will do it for us. Let's click OK, and you can see they're perfectly fine on here. But that's not the point of this video, so we'll just get rid of that. And what I'm going to do is create these buildings, and I'm not going to have them elevated from the object because we'll have many situations where we might want to do something different. Let's click here, let's G and Z this up. So we've got all these buildings and I'm going to look at these from a top down view. And the first thing we need to recognize is that we don't want any buildings hanging over the edge. Like this one's getting pretty close, but it should be okay. This one's not going to work. So let's just go into edit mode. I'm going to hit L to select all those collective vertices. X and delete those vertices and now we should be fine. So we can't have things hanging over the edge, otherwise it's going to cause a problem. Now what would be great is if we could shrink wrap these buildings onto this surface. Now if we just come here and we go to add and a shrink wrap and we target this, this does work but you'll notice look it all flattens all of the buildings and we don't want that. What we need to do is tell it to put something here and then mimic the buildings to that. And for that, we use what's called a lattice modifier. So what we're going to do is shift A, and we're going to bring in a lattice. It's going to be relatively small, basically at our cursor. Let's just S to scale that up. There we go. And let's go to about here. So we've got the correct width. And I'm going to look from above, and I'm going to S, and then X, and then we're going to get the correct length. We can always move it over for a bit and then S and then X and more. That will do right up to the edge. There we go. So that will be fine. So we've got this lattice. But at the moment, this lattice is in 3D. We don't want this. We actually want this to be working on a plane. So I'm going to come down here to my object data properties. And we've got this resolution U, V and W. Now, that actually means X, Y, and Z, and we want the Z to only be one, and there we go, we've got our plane. So, let's just come here, I'm gonna G and Z this up. And you could have this, so that the buildings are slightly floating above the surface. I want to do the opposite, and I want to have the buildings just a tiny bit below the surface, so that I can Boolean them together. So you can see they're just below this plane. The next thing we need to do is break up this plane so that it will conform to this undulating surface. And again, we do this with our object data properties and our resolution, and I can just keep bringing this up. In this instance, I want to want this pretty high. This is probably overkill, but it's not going to be an issue. And we're going to do the same thing here. And we want to get these, in most instances, approximately square. I'm actually going to up that a little bit and then up that a little bit more. But you can go as far as you want with this. Then we need to create a lattice modifier for this object. 
Okay, oh, let's get rid of that shrink wrap modifier because it didn't work. This layout for your modifiers is called modifier list. It's really nice, I think it's really preferable. If you go to edit preferences and then get extensions and type in modifier, you'll have modifier list here and you need to install it. I've got a video on that, again, I'll link that in the description so you can check it out if you want to. But this doesn't change what's going on here. What we want to do is effectively add a lattice modifier to all of these objects for this lattice. Now we can do this manually, but what I prefer to do is click on this object. So all of our buildings, notice they're one object, shift click on the lattice, and then I'm gonna press Control and P, and I'm gonna add a lattice deform. Now this isn't doing anything here, but if I just go into edit mode and grab these and move them up, you can see that our buildings move with them. But importantly, it doesn't flatten the buildings out. So what we can do now is select the lattice and then add a shrink wrap modifier and target our surface. And this has now moved our lattice modifier down and that's dragged the buildings with it, which I think is really handy. So we've now got our buildings placed exactly on this surface. So that is how we're going to do it. Now this is useful for loads and loads of different things. For example, iconography being put on a shirt or a uniform or something like this. But the one I thought I'd mention was this chainmail, which I think really wants to have some sort of undulation to it to look right. It shouldn't just sit this perfectly flat. So exactly the same process. We're gonna bring in a lattice. I'm gonna do this a bit quicker. I'm just gonna G and then I'm just gonna S to scale this up until it's a little bit wider than the thing that we're going to be moving around. Then S, and I'll do that in the Z axis there, and then G and Z that down. And we can always make this wider. For example, if I go like here, this is quite useful because if I then add things to the chain mail, like more links to this, it will still work. So don't be too worried about that. Now in this instance, for our lattice modifier, we want to change this on the X direction. So remember X, Y, Z, so we want this one to be one. And once again, I want this to slightly overlap that surface, just so that we've got something to Boolean to if I wanted to 3D print this. Then we're gonna come here, let's up, and make this nice and square in the Y direction or the V direction. Do the same in the W, which is the equivalent of a Z. Get that nice and square, we'll go somewhere about there. And then once again, we've got two objects here making up these. This is so that I can select both of them and then just up the array. So if I come to the array here, I can just up that on both of them if I hold Alt. Remember, if you hold down Alt, when you change a modifier, it will find if it's got the same modifier. Note that this object has an array 001 and so does this one. So if I have both of them selected, so shift select on that, an alt click on the count, it will affect both of them. It's a really, really handy trick to save you some time. But what that means, let's just bring those down a little bit, is that I can select this one there, control and P, lattice to form, select the other one, shift select, control and P, lattice to form, and now I can add my shrink wrap modifier to this. Let's target that and it's gonna be horribly deformed. Now in this instance, what we want to do here is change from nearest surface to project. And then for this, we want to project along the X axis and we want to do positive and negative, and there we go. So working perfectly fine. And what we can do, because this lattice object is bigger, you'll notice it's nicely conforming to those curves, is I can always come to that and those modifiers. Let's go to array one, and once again, hold down Alt, and just up that and they're also gonna to conform to it. What's really cool about this is if I come to this surface and I go into sculpt mode, which is how we did this, I can go to the draw brush and maybe massively exaggerate some of these folds. Let's smooth that out a bit. So now we've got a much bigger fold here and then as soon as I go back into object mode, it's still conforming to that new shape. So I think this is really fun. You do need to be slightly careful with this because if it gets too curved, it will distort these rings. So for example here, that's probably a little bit harsh. So what you might wanna do is come to this and then just maybe smooth that out a little bit or potentially just bring it forward so it's not as extreme in its curves. Same here. And possibly here, 
that looks a bit much so let's just bring that forward a bit so there are some limitations on this but it is generally pretty good and it ends up with a really nice quick and easy result for you to use and if we want to move these up let's g and z those up they'll move along the lattice because the lattice isn't moving so i can just move that with the object and everything moves over the undulating surface Anyway, hopefully that's been useful. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.